welcome to Films and Stuff with your hosts, Pete Mitchell and Ethan Hunt. Pete, welcome back. It is Saturday. Mm-hmm. Films and Stuff, we're back. Mega episode today. We got to talk about Jurassic World. Jurassic World Dominion. Dominion. How are you? Everything are you excited? Are you what what did you think? What's your feeling on this? So it is for me Saturday morning. I just came home from seeing it minutes ago. Literally right. minutes ago. And I think you saw it about 24 hours ago. Yeah, I saw it uh, almost exactly 24 hours ago. That's right. So it is fresh in our minds. What was the cinema like for you? Was it packed? Not packed? Kids no, cheering. What was it? I was fortunate. It was, you know, relatively early in the morning. And like I've said in the past, I like going a little earlier because the cinema tends to be empty. There were maybe four or five people in the th- entire theater. And because it's Jurassic Park and because it's, you know, the opening day, it was on the big screen as well. It wasn't Ooh. like a smaller screen. Yeah. So I got the entire experience, but I got to do it basically on my own. I think there were a handful of people in there at most. Okay. And what was your what was your mindset going into this? I mean, were you like jacked? Were you wearing your safari outfit and your climbing boots and your hat and... Or were you just kind of like, meh, I'll check it out? I was, to be very honest, I was meh because the, you know, if we're going to split it up, let's look at the six movies, you, you know, as the Jurassic Park trilogy and then the Jurassic World trilogy. Yeah. Honestly, after Jurassic Park 1, it's kind of been downhill ever since, yeah. right? There's been a couple of peaks and a couple of valleys, but more or less, I don't think more any of the movies have, <laughs> more <valleys>. yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't think any of the movies have really recaptured that sense of awe and excitement and amazement as Jurassic Park 1 did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, again, I went in, uh, you know, with hopes that it was going to be excellent and with hopes that I was going to be wrong and that I thought, oh my God, it's going to be amazing. Uh, and it was not. So what's your, what's your, what's your rating? Honestly, it's a, it's a skip. Yeah, I have to say. So I went 11 a.m. on a Saturday and the cinema was uh, kind of what you'd expect on a Saturday morning. I think a good bit full. Um, okay. I would not say, it's always hard to gauge the crowd, but like, I did not feel like a lot of energy. You know, for Top Gun and Star Wars, I felt like a lot of energy. Uh, I did not feel the energy here. And I went in the same way as you, pretty meh. I mean, I, I have to say, if it weren't for films and stuff, I probably would have waited until this came yes. out uh, on streaming, just because I'm I'm not a huge Jurassic fan, firstly. And secondly, as you mentioned, after number one, the last four have been pretty plain. Miserable. So I just yeah. didn't really feel a lot of enthusiasm. And I have to say, this is, from a cinema perspective, absolutely a skip. If you're really a dinosaur fan wait for it on a streaming service, but I... And we're going to touch upon that, but how many dinosaurs did we really see and did they play an integral part in this movie at all? So I think they were really just side pieces. Maybe that's our first question. Is this a dinosaur series anymore? Exactly. (laughs) And I think that you hit the nail on the head. So look, both of us, uh, I'm definitely a skip. I think uh, at best... Ethan is suggesting wait for streaming at best. at best. Yeah. But I think both of us are leaning towards the skip it. Yeah. And let's just quickly give a very quick rundown synopsis of the movie. This movie takes place a couple years after Jurassic World 2, mm-hmm. where you've got uh, Bryce Dallas Howard, who's kind of like this pro dinosaur version of PETA activist Mm -hmm. who's like trying to, you know, free them from cruelty. Dinosaurs are roaming the earth uh, after they were released at the end of the second film. 
they are living in isolation. So she is now like in a full blown relationship with Chris Pratt and they are like co-parenting the granddaughter, the clone. Macy Lockwood. Yeah. Right. The clone who plays the cloned granddaughter of John Hammond, the original guy who created Jurassic Park all the way back in 1993. With Newman. Right? (laughs) With Newman, exactly. And so you've got, uh, so that's there. Then she gets kidnapped and she's wanted because it's widely accepted that she's the first cloned human being. And so people want her for a variety of reasons. She gets kidnapped, which is the impetus for the new Jurassic Park stars to kick off this movie. Simultaneously, we find that a bunch of genetically modified locusts are running rampant through America's farmlands and are eating all the crops that are made of seeds or or that are grown from seeds, not by like this version of Monsanto, right? I mean, it's a very thin allegory, right? So, and that kicks off the plot of this movie for the original Jurassic Park trio with Sam Neill, Laura Dern, and Jeff Goldblum. Mm -hmm. Then they convert, so they go to the story. The second act is with them going to Malta by them, I mean Bryce Dallas Howard and Chris Pratt going to Malta to save her their daughter. They miss her. There's some action sequences in Malta. And then they end up going to Switzerland, where there is a new dinosaur sanctuary created by this Biosyn uh, pharmaceutical group, which is also creating that, you know, those genetically modified locusts, which is where the original trio get to. Uh, automatically they hook up there and they're trying to get you know evidence that uh biosyn is this evil corporation the two groups the old group and the new group meet up and they have to kind of escape together and you know of course dinosaurs are somehow ancillarily related involved in all of this yeah that's interesting is that we say Dinosaurs are ancillarily related because I agree. I mean, it's the the premise is that, you know, bi- dinosaurs are now, you know, integrated into the world and they're roaming just like, you know, a fox or a deer or a seagull. And, you know, there's various levels of, you know, problems, you know, at least with the, uh, the predatory ones. Um, but apart from that, there's really not a whole lot of dinosaur stuff. Uh, a lot of it takes place in the laboratory. It takes place, you know, in this big biosyn complex, which looks uh, suspiciously like the new Apple campus <laughs> in Cupertino, California. Yeah, the big and, circular thing. And right? yeah, yeah, yeah. the uh, the boss of biosyn also looks suspiciously like. Like Tim, uh, yeah. Tim Keys, Tim yeah. Apple. What's his name? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, there's, and, and I thought that he was actually a pretty good bad guy. He was a pretty good villain. Um, but apart from this, I have to say, like, I give I give the creators a lot of credit because what they had to work with after the fifth one, if someone says, "Okay, come up with a new storyline," eh. We've seen it all before. They recycled a lot of themes. Surprise, surprise. It ends with everyone escaping in a helicopter. (laughs) I mean, it's the only way these things end. Stereotypical Jurassic Park ending, really. And and with, you know, the the two apex uh, predators, you know, fighting each other for supremacy. But I have to say the storyline, while I cannot say it was incredible it was actually pretty good given what they had to work with i i I don't think that there's really a better storyline that they could have come up with it's hard to oh no i have ideas i know tell me tell me tell me okay so so let me let me go over why i think this was a really bad movie and when i say bad movie i mean fundamentally i had problems with it right and the fundamental thing is that look when you're talking about any story Generally speaking, wide it's widely accepted and 
this structure is widely accepted because it's what works is that you have like a three or four act structure, right? Where the first act is where you kind of introduce the characters of the, the movie or the story. And you generally have the first act generally ends with an inciting event, right? Something happens that kicks the movie off. So you're introduced to all the characters. You're introduced to the good guys, the bad guys, some ancillary characters, some plot, uh, and maybe not the plot overall, but the, you know, the location and the set piece. And you get an idea of what the plot could be. And then act one generally ends with some inciting event. Act two continues where you have the impetus of the plot. Really, it's the maintenance of the plot. And, you know, something else happens that keeps the plot going. And then act three, generally speaking, is kind of like the conclusion, right? Where you have another sequence, which is like, this is what the story is kind of wrapping up towards. And you have some kind of conclusion. It's, you know, what we learned in basic, you know, English 101 when we were in middle school, which is you have to have an introduction, you have to have the main story, and then you have to have a conclusion, right? Like in any essay. Oh, yeah. And this, I felt like it didn't have any of those uh, structured properly, right? In Act 1, you're introduced to two groups of protagonists and two different plots, right? One, which is about this evil group of poachers who are kidnapping humans and dinosaurs and they're going to like this shady dinosaur market in malta and the second is where you have also now a a second plot which is about uh, a shady organization which has like bioengineered some crops and some you know locusts and they're you know it's a profit driven motive Then the second act, you know, it's just basically the second act for me was basically just the Malta action sequence, right? Where they basically you and I have been to Malta. Oh, I have comments about that too, by the way. And I don't recall Malta (laughs) being anything like that. Did Malta relocate to the Middle East or to like Egypt? (laughs) What's so funny is that it was one of my. It's. It's my sixth point on my list of notes that I made after this. And I'll get to that as well. And then act three is where you see the plots merge, right? The two main plots merge. And then they have this like weird melding. And the conclusion isn't really a conclusion. And as you and I have both pointed out, this is a Jurassic movie, but dinosaurs are not really the main impetus of anything. They're kind of like, Oh, and by the way, we also have dinosaurs who yeah. are kind of like obstacles to the, yeah. you know, they're like, uh, dinosaurs play like the it's, it's a level cor- yeah, bad it's, guy. It's a corporate espionage film that takes place in a zoo. That's another way of saying it, right? <laughs> if you remove the dinosaurs and put it into a wildlife sanctuary, it yeah. would have been exactly the same thing. Or a jungle. Instead yeah, of dinosaurs, dinosaurs it could have been... Yeah. It could have been rhinos, it could have been lions, it could have been jaguars, it could have been any normal animal that we know. Rhino. And they, yeah. it would have been exactly the same movie, right? Which, again, and, and to be fair, that would have added even more credence to it because at least we can appreciate that rhino poaching is a real thing, elephant poaching is a real thing in Africa. All these things are real problems that we see in the world today. And that wouldn't, I don't understand why they needed dinosaurs in this movie. Well, I mean, it is uh, Jurassic Park. <laughs> but that's the point, right? So, and, and that's you're another saying, thing. I so, agree. You're saying the, the plot didn't actually need dinosaurs in it. They wrote, a, they wrote a plot and then they just sprinkled in dinosaurs because it's a Jurassic movie. It should have been a movie written point, around the dinosaurs. I think they were like writing the end and then they were like, oh, crap, this is a mm. dino movie. Oh, let's quickly go back. And let's throw some dinos in there. Oh, let's get a velociraptor get um, kidnapped. And then Chris Pratt has to rescue the velociraptor because he makes a promise to a velociraptor Mama. that he'll get his kid back. Yeah. I mean, come on, man. Even for Jurassic Park, this was a step too far. I mean, that's not even my biggest problem. I think my problem oh, is yeah. that that's not even my biggest problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then, by the way, Going back to your point, which was my sixth point of (laughs) furious note-taking, what is this Hollywood obsession with making any non-US place that's 
even vaguely exotic, have a sepia tint, right? Malta, you and I have been to Malta. We've, we spent three or four days there together on a work trip. Malta does not look like it's in the Middle East. No, oh, it's it not Morocco. Like it's no. in the Middle Ages. <laughs> yeah. And and for the love of God, like it's a modern city. It's a modern yeah. country. And of course, every old year, every European city in the uh, uh, in Europe, and most even East Coast U.S. cities have an old city element to them, yeah, right? But there's cobblestone. But this yeah. this certainly implied the entire city or the entire country was basically back in the 19th century, ruled by some you know uh, ancient Middle Eastern king, and or you know some Moroccan king. It felt like something yeah. out of Indiana Jones. Yeah. It didn't feel like an old city, like uh, like a real city, yeah. right? And the whole place isn't a marketplace and a square. And also, Malta, a famously small, compact island nation, dino trading, and then all of a sudden they escape and nobody seems to care when they're in that, you know, little dino, the black market. Two huge dinos have escaped, and people are still gambling in front of the fighting pit. You just see a guy like riding his bicycle, and he gets eaten off the yeah. bicycle. Like, and then he gets you, eaten off a bicycle. If you would see that, you would probably like take a different alleyway. Like, I'm maybe not going to take my usual path to work today. People right? would lose their minds. <laughs> like, I don't understand. And everyone was so nonchalant. They're like, "Oh, it's it's Tuesday. Well, we I guess with, the dinosaurs are. We out. live with dinosaurs now." <laughs> I mean, this. the problem with this movie was it was all over the place. I think it had two competing plots, and it didn't do a good job, really, of integrating. It wasn't. It had really nothing to do with dinosaurs. They say it do, did because they very, very loosely put in dino DNA being crucial to solving, you know, a lot of uh, genetic problems. But then why introduce the yeah. locust element? But, why, you know, or or and and if you're going to go with that Monsanto yeah. thing, then why introduce the element of the the kidnapping and poachers? You know, like it just made but, no sense. But Pete, can I can I identify what I think the biggest problem is that there's a lot of movies that you and I can pick apart the plot, but there's also yeah. some movies that there was not a single single time in here I even came close to laughing. Not a single, single funny line or thing happened. And humor or a very cool character can really, it's like the duct tape of films. You can really smooth over a lot of totally. plot problems if you're totally. like, that was funny. That was a funny yeah. movie. Chris Pratt started on uh, Parks and Recreation. He is a comedian. Right? Yep. Jeff Goldblum is by profession a comedian. Why isn't there any single line in here? Not just that I didn't laugh. They didn't even try to make me laugh. And for that reason, I think you and I obsessively focused on how many gaps there are in the plot, which we probably could have like forgiven if it would have been a really joyous movie to watch. Honestly, it this reminded me, uh, you know, I mean, did you also notice that like maybe 80% of the lines Chris Pat, Pratt said, he said with his hands out in front of a dinosaur, yeah. like with his palms out. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, every, every time he spoke, even when he was with a human, he's like, yeah. oh, I'm going to put my hand out. Like, I don't get it. I just don't get it. Yeah. It was so uh, infuriating because yeah. there were certain, like, it could have been so... It could have brought the series back. I mean, he's funny. Yeah, I but, have to say. You know, he's funny in Star-Lord. When you watch Guardians of the Galaxy, he is charismatic and he is funny. Really funny. Why, when they have him a leading man in this film, they don't even write a single line or any single situation where he's, he's funny. It's, it's really, I think, a disservice to him. I would say that Chris Pratt and Jeff Goldblum are two of the more charismatic actors that we have working today. Yeah. 
And I would say there are certainly elements of time, like the, the there was a little bit of comedic back and forth in terms of how they behaved with each other between Sam Neill and uh, Jeff Goldblum, uh, which yeah. stems back from Jurassic Park yeah. 1, which I loved. So yeah. the original tri- trio, it was so good to see them back together. And you could see that they gelled. There was great chemistry there. I, but I'm, when lu- you I'm saw- lukewarm about that. I'll, I'll tell you, I'm lukewarm about that. I, I was fu- I was very yeah. happy with them. To be honest, I'm not saying that they were good yeah. in this movie. I'm just saying the chemistry was yeah. good. I thought and, Goldblum. And, I thought Goldblum had a very good performance. I, he, yes. he wasn't and, funny, you know, but I thought that Goldblum. yeah, he had his understated, kind of sarcasticy stuff. I, I thought that he yeah. was reasonably. I, I thought honestly he was pretty solid. Probably the best you could expect to get from him in this role. Right. Dern didn't add anything, and I'm a huge Lord Dern fan. Like uh, me too. And and uh yeah and the the romance between the two of them felt yeah. a little bit forced yeah uh you know and then i don't know i just i found the whole thing to be a little I mean, muddled sam, that sam way sam neil is wearing his hat inside did you get an indiana jones vibe yeah. from him i'm like dude you're inside a laboratory why are you wearing your hat you know like it, it's almost like they intentionally dress those two up so that you don't forget oh by the way they're archaeologists, you know. Yeah, they're archaeologists, right? And like <laughs> the one scene that was that that really made me think that they were going for an Indiana Jones vibe is when he, Laura Dern, and Maisie uh, get stuck in that in that mine. Yeah. Right, and yeah. he takes the the pliers like the or whatever torch. it is, and yeah. lights it, and he wraps a cloth yeah. around it and uses it as a torch. And you see him with uh, his Indiana Jones hat. Yeah. And then he drops the hat and he go, goes for back for the hat. And I was just like, oh, my God, this couldn't be more Indiana I Jones know. than anything else, yeah. right? The second movie was frustrating. Like, I didn't like it so much. But it set up what I thought was going to be a great way for them to bring Jurassic World back into the forefront and they kind of teased it end at the end of Jurassic World 2 they kind of teased it at the beginning of Jurassic World 3 but then they didn't follow through what i think people really want to see is okay dinosaurs are roaming the world fine right there or at least america fine now let's see how they interact with people in the cities we've seen dinosaurs in the jungle We've seen them in sanctuaries. We've seen them in cages. I thought this was going to really be man versus dino. Imagine, you know, you're in the middle of New York City and you're kind of, you know, the streets are rampaging, it has rampaging uh, triceratops. I thought it was going to be like that. And, you know, you kind of saw glimpses of it because there were a couple of pterodactyls who sent, set up nests yeah. on top of these massive skyscrapers. You see that, but it's a blink and you miss it moment. And then immediately we go back to the Swiss sanctuary where they've set up yet another Jurassic World era or Jurassic Park style, you know, sanctuary for dinosaurs where they can't really do any damage to anybody. Yeah. I mean, so what? tell me what your pr- proposed plot is if you've got to rewrite this all over after five where do you go for number six all right so i'm going to work with you on this all right but here's what i think is going to happen let's workshop it i think what's going to happen is dinosaurs are now you know some dinos have kind of settled kind of like how they've showed some of them are in the redwood forest you know they're just kind of living a natural lifestyle but some of them are still struggling because now you've got big cities right so uh, because I think it was close to San, uh, California. Let's talk Los Angeles. Let's talk San, Fran- San Francisco, right? So you see dinosaurs rampaging through the streets of San Francisco, and it becomes a storyline about how man has to coexist with dinosaurs. And this is now I'm taking a little bit away from, uh, what's that movie? Uh, Godzilla, where you have a scientist that creates some kind of device that allows you to repel dinosaurs away. And they're, and the military is kind of working to weaponize dinosaurs, so they're trying to use it in a bad way. And it becomes a case where you have dinosaurs in the city, the good guys are trying to coexist and slash push them out naturally, and the bad guys are 
other humans who are trying to weaponize dinosaurs in some way or the other. Not bad. Uh, what do you think? Not bad off, off the cuff. How about, let me throw this out there and you tell me if it, if it captivates you at all. What if we have dinosaurs now, since they're living in the modern world, are susceptible to you know the types of viruses and bacteria that they were never exposed to, and suddenly okay. they start dying off, and instead we need some rescue mission. And I mean, I'm, I'm just making up the science as we go. There's you know some dinosaurs that are you know nestled away somewhere, and they have to go back to the island and find a male and a female and reproduce them and kind of save them and then put them like in a sanctuary. I'm kind of okay with the idea of a sanctuary, kind of like in the Swiss Italian Alps. That seems like a little bit realistic to me or, or okay. But I feel like I wanted more of a, uh, I wanted to, you know, it's, it's fun when you kind of flip the script. You know, the dinosaurs have kind of been the bad guys previously, where they were causing damage. They were eating people. I thought we would like flip it a little bit and suddenly it would be, let's actually save the dinos. You know, they're not able to survive. You know, we thought that they were going to be these predators that were going to be causing havoc in the cities. Like you mentioned, you know, the Triceratops is running through the streets of, you know, Los Angeles or something. But let's say that starts and suddenly they're like, hey, we can't deal with the smog, the pollution, all this other, you know, bacteria that we never had a, a million years ago. Suddenly they're dying off. We're like, hey, we gotta we gotta rescue these before they're gone forever, you know? I, I thought it would be a little bit more like race against time. In here there was no like there was no dramatic element here. You know, there was no race against the clock. There was Exactly. There was nothing that was kind of yeah. driving you forward in like uh, in a way that created tension. Yeah. Right? Or what if we flip the script one more time and say, hey, what if the the dinosaurs are bringing diseases from 65 oh, million years ago that's that not we bad. can't deal that's, where, that we can't that we as humans can't that's deal with. not bad what if and then there's a race to find that one you know to solve yeah. the g genome so that we yeah. can figure out how they've survived it that's actually that's not this is why we workshop together pete See, there you go <laughs> yeah that's actually a very good one i i like that where like we saw them a little bit in the ocean what if they start you know like messing up the ecosystem and suddenly there's no more tuna. There's no more salmon. They're unleashing, yep. uh, you know, like kind of their own bacteria into the water. There's no more shrimp. There's no more anything. Yeah. They're and, kind of terraforming yes, the world to the way they yes. were. Yes. Right. Suddenly right? there's so all of a sudden no more cows, no more sheep, no more venison. Yeah. yeah. But then like, you know, the methane emissions yes. go through the roof and yes. like, the atmosphere is slowly changing back to prehistoric times. Yeah. I agree. I, I think, I think. That's actually a very oh man. We've only been doing this for twenty eight minutes. Twenty eight minutes. We didn't okay. ask for like a suite at Chateau Marmont. We didn't ask for anything, and here we are, twenty eight minutes later. We've got a much better plot for this huge franchise than they've come up with. And, and can I? What in addition to the plot? I mean, I know that you're very uh, loyal. To Dern, to Sam Neill, to Goldblum. That's all well and good. I'm not going to criticize that. I admire your, your loyalty, but <laughs> this needs a new face. It's the same yeah. cast. Okay. Chris yeah. Pratt. Well, thank we did you. talk about that, right? Uh, yeah. Very, I mean, I used to love Bryce Dallas Howard. Love Bryce Dallas Howard. She's not compelling to me anymore. I'm not excited by, uh, the pilot I thought was, was pretty good. I'm not excited yep. about at all Macy Lockwood. For me, this is just another angsty teenager. I don't need this yeah. in my life. And I'm not sure actually what parent wants to go to a movie and see another angsty teenager in their life. I, I thought it's unnecessary, not lovable, uh, unnecessary, to be honest. But I would have loved to see like a new face. I don't want to see Henry Wu again and try to make him into a good guy. I thought that, you know, uh, Mohamedou Athi, you know, Ramzi Kol, I thought he was very good. I wanted to see like another person, you know, become a little bit more prominent and kind of like another voice of the Jurassic series. I mean, if you're going to have seven, Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard again, I mean, Laura Dern and Sam Neill, I mean, having geriatric love affair. I mean, come on, we've got to, 
they've got to introduce someone new. And I thought this was exactly the film where they could have said, now starring this person, you know? I really, yeah. really feel like that's a missed opportunity if they want this to be a sustainable franchise going forward. So when we spoke about this last week or the week before, I was on the fence. I agreed with you that if we had someone, remember we mentioned Ashton Kutcher. I think and I said Justin. T- I think I said Justin. And then you Timberlake. also said, yeah, yeah, yeah t- Timberlake and Beale. We yes. suggested, right? We talked about it. Yes. I was on the fence at the time because, again, I was very happy with the original trilo- trio, yeah. and I thought that. You know what? I think Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard can kind of carry it if there's any nah. shortcomings. And I, having seen this movie now, I think oh, I'm my take favorite it words back. are I'm coming. My favorite words are coming. <laughs> yeah, I think you called it, my friend. I think you absolutely nailed it. Is that we oh, yeah. do need fresh blood? Yes. If this is the end, if this is genuinely end of the tra- of the the franchise, that's fine. I know that. I'm cynical because I don't think Hollywood is the type of uh, industry or environment where they would leave money on the table. They tend to beat horses until they're dead and well beyond their dead. Yeah. Uh, so I don't Im- – I, I can't imagine that any studio is going to pass up the opportunity to make another Jurassic Park or Jurassic World, but it's, it's sometime in the future. It's too late, though. This, I mean, you should not, you shouldn't let Jurassic Park six come out. Let's call it Jurassic Park six. It cannot, yeah. you cannot let Jurassic Park six come out and then say, ah, uh, you know what, that kind of flopped. We probably should have introduced someone new. That's okay. We'll do it for seven. I mean, the the time to do that was in six. Say, hey, you know, five wasn't so great. We need something to carry six into seven. Let's introduce new blood. This was the time to do it. And, and I'm really disappointed. It could have been someone in the lab. It could have been, you know, Ramsey Cole. It, it, someone should have had a bigger role and taken over for, for Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard, you know, or, or send off Bryce Dallas Howard, you know, and, and say her and Pratt are, are moving on or Dern and Sam Neill are moving on. It's just, where does it go from here? It's really tough now to come up with a new script. And you're going to have to really do a lot of gymnastics, I think, to explain why one of these characters is no longer there. And and more importantly, even the new characters that they have introduced, yeah. like Dewanda Wise, you know, the 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 pilot yeah. and yeah. uh Ramsey Cole, yeah. is they're not strong enough individually or even as a pair to carry the franchise forward they're not charismatic enough don't get me wrong i really like dewanda wise i'd like to see i'd like to see both of those again but they didn't even write them in a way where it's like she's a pilot okay uh do you need another and you see her that she gets the same (laughs) plane at the end of the movie and that's it so i mean you know one of the great things that fast and furious has done despite some awesome, awful, awful plots that we could like <laughs> tear up is they've always gone out and they've brought in talent, you know, and, oh, and that's yeah. always kept it fresh. And I'm really yeah. not clear why Jurassic Park, which was kind of a middling franchise, even before six didn't adopt the same strategy and say, Hey, okay. The rock's not available. Okay. This person's not available. Let's go get Kevin Hart. Right. Let's go yep. get this person. Let's get, like, let's get John Cena. Yeah. Let's get you know uh, whoever else. Yeah. Whoever else. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I mean that that that's what I think is a lost opportunity. Yeah, I imagine that if they're going to make a seventh movie, it's going to be a whole new, fresh batch of characters with zero reference to the original characters. And when I say original, I mean not just the trio, but also yeah. the, not just the original three, but then Bryce Dallas Howard and Chris Pratt from the second movie. Yeah. And it's going to be set in a world that now has dinosaurs in it, and that's it. It's not going to have anything to do with the, any of the previous movies. Uh, yeah. You know, it's just, for me, fundamentally, the Jurassic World movies have all, sorry, the Jurassic Park movies have, genuinely been disaster movies right disaster movies with dinosaurs in them yeah there's always some element of tension and this movie didn't have that element of tension i agree 
So I don't know. It just, it felt really, fell really, really flat for me. I walked out of the movie. I was disappointed. And again, as you rightly said, it's not a movie I would have normally seen given yeah. how the second one ended. But I still walked in hoping that it had changed. Any scenes that you liked? Any scenes that you can say, hey, that was actually pretty funny. Or that was pretty good. Can I give you mine? Uh, I, yeah, please. I thought when Bryce Dallas Howard ejected from the plane and she's like in the seat with a parachute, oh, yeah. that seemed like it was filmed with like a selfie stick. I yeah. thought that was actually very, very cool. Yeah. I thought that was a very, very good scene. Yeah. Because they were focused on her the entire time. Yeah. She's like on this gyroscope yeah. kind of thing yeah. where she's going around in circles. And I, I thought yeah, that it was, was good. A, that, you're right. That was I good. thought that was a very, very good shot. Uh, I yeah. thought the when the locusts caught on fire and escaped and kind of like created all the uh, the havoc from the sky or and were falling. Yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. Although I was wondering, since everything was ice and snow... What actually caught on fire? <laughs> I just don't understand how a bunch of locusts can set the entire forest on fire. I mean, it was, like I get if they were all concentrated in one area and you set off one tree on fire and that spreads. But it was but they were like miles apart. But it was snow covered Alps. I mean, we saw that there was snow. We saw that. I mean, actually, it's a little bit unclear what this terrain was like because when you think about it, Bryce Dallas Howard crashed into something that was clearly a jungle yeah she was in water That's right she was in water but then close yeah. to the headquarters pratt and uh dewanda on Wise an ice lake right we're on an ice lake yeah yeah <laughs> wait a second what's i mean what's the it's what's 10 the, different biomes within five yeah. kilometers of each other exactly what's, I, I, what's it, the climate <laughs> <laughs> I I honestly think that what they did was look let's have let's throw some cool new dinosaurs in there let's throw you know a therizinosaur in there let's throw uh you know that feathered raptor yeah, thing in which there which is cool that can yeah. all cool but yeah. then they built like these one off 5 second long action sequences around them or set pieces around yeah. them and then you forget about them yeah. like there was no you know the beauty of the real beauty of Jurassic Park 1 was there was one T-Rex, there was one pack of Velociraptors, and that's really, in terms of the danger, that's all you were really ever worried about. You saw a few other small compies, you saw like that spitting thing for Newman. That's it. There was no focus on anything else. You weren't really worried about the main characters based on those other dinosaurs. You were only worried for the main characters based on the T-Rex and based on the Velociraptors. That's it. It was so focused yeah. And this, I think, like, and that final battle scene, which you alluded to, was an example of that, where you have that Giganotosaurus versus the T Rex versus the Therizinosaur or whatever that other dinosaur was. And it's kind of like then they start doing a tag team battle against the Giga, Giga and you're just like, I don't, what's going on here? I don't understand where this is coming from. Yeah. I, I, I still stand by my earlier comment, which is, Whenever you build a franchise around animals, you're still kind of limited about how much you can do that's, that's new, right? Because it has to yep. be all physical. There's, there's no relationship building. You know, there's no humor. There's no sarcasm. There's no, yep. there's no character arc, right? I mean, a T-Rex yep. is a T-Rex in every single film. I mean, look what they've tried Agreed. to do. They've tried to humanize the raptor blue as much as possible. It's still a raptor. It cannot speak. Yeah. It can't do anything other than hunt and kind of like look and make some croaking sounds. That that's it. Yeah. And and I think yeah. that's the challenge of of Jurassic, which is why they moved the storyline away from dinosaurs because there's only so many battles that we can see. I mean, I'd rather see the T Rex just hunting down Brontosauruses and like eating them in a very very like vicious way. I'd be interested yeah. in that. We haven't actually seen like, you know, like the, the carnivores going after the herbivores at all. But apart from that, I, I understand why they, they had to move away a little bit. I think it's tough. I think it's really, really tough to write the, the script. But I agree with you. We came up with something better within, you know, 20 minutes of this podcast episode than I think the, uh, the writers came up with. And I know that they wanted to do something in 
kind of the mountains of the U.S. Then they wanted to go somewhere kind of exotic in Europe, and then they wanted to take it back to the sanctuary. But eh. it's you know, I think if you had that, and and the the you know the element where we're saying that a virus from the Jurassic era comes yeah. back to modern day Earth and yeah. humans can't handle it, I think there's a way to implement all five main characters yeah. in that. Right, yeah. you have the paleobiologist with working with the uh, you know, working. So you have Ellie Sattler working with Sam Neill, uh, Alan Grant. They're both, you know, dinosaur experts and paleo bio, uh, biologists. So they can work on finding the, the animals that are causing the problem and they can work on finding the cure. And then, you know, they're like, Oh, we found this one potential tree or that has a berry in the middle of, you know, whatever xyz location that we can go and then they need chris pratt who's like a tracker who can go help them you know there's a way of integrating all the different elements of the skill sets that each of these characters bring versus what they did in this movie which is to say okay we're two random groups that kind of get mushed together at the end of it united by what this one evil monsanto like corporation yeah that is right. That is right. I'm I'm sorry to say this, but Sam Neill is still working in an archaeological dig, like brushing off dinosaur bones with a toothbrush. Why? Why? He's got to really who, love it who, or he needs the who, money. But who is funding him? Who's like, you know what? I think we should give this guy a grant to dig up some old dinosaur bones. Never mind that there's dinosaurs all over the place just walking around. We need- oh yeah, touche. Right? Touche. That's actually really valid, by the way. I think you <laughs> nailed it. It's like, wait a minute, why do we need archaeologists anymore? We've got live specimens. He, he should have been, been he should have been unemployed. Honestly, he should have been like fat Thor. Unemployed. And Laura Dern went to him and said, Look, Sam, I got a job for us. You're not doing anything. No one goes to your yeah. lectures anymore. No one's reading your book. You can't get grants. I've got an idea. Let's do this. Jeez, that is such a good point. I didn't even think about because why do you need an archaeologist to study dinosaurs? That makes no sense. It would have been, but you know, it would have been funny if, like, some student would have been like, you know what? I think this was like a two-legged creature, and all of a sudden you see like the dinosaur, the exact dinosaur, like running through their sight and like tearing everything up. Right? They're like, oh, yeah. there it is. Yeah. <laughs> if they're gonna do it's that. Just- like at least make oh, it that's really funny. humorous, right? No, that's really funny. No like I like humor. that. Like, yes, you're so funny because Jeff, you're so right because Jeff Goldblum did make that point, right? He's like, yeah. "Why am I doing this job? I've got five kids. I've got to feed them somehow, <laughs> right?" Like he made that point was yeah. like, "I've work. I'm working with the evil empire yeah. because they pay well, yeah. and because I need the money because yeah. I've got five kids, yeah. right?" Which again. Plays into his character, yeah. plays a little bit into that humor yeah. element. Apart from the Monsanto, which somehow has become a bad word in, in, in culture now, but apart from the Monsanto-like uh, elements of Biosyn, Biosyn really didn't seem that evil, right? They gave dinosaurs a sanctuary, they kind of controlled them, kept the peace, and they said, hey, we're, we're going to try to find some some diseases and, and study their yeah. immune system. That that didn't seem bad at all. It was well, just that and the kidnapping, right? The yeah. working with illegal poachers. That's kind yeah. of not great. Yeah. I mean, I guess that gets back to are you really worried about the poaching of the dinosaurs? Uh, I mean, that's that's a that's a hard issue, right? They used to be extinct. We brought them back. So you're really worried about them being extinct, or is it just cruelty? Cruelty, I agree, is. Yeah. I guess it's just cruelty, right? Because you have that back alley den, uh, den where they're gambling on them. They're doing like the equivalent of like dog fighting or yeah. chicken fighting. Yeah. yeah I wouldn't be messing with any of those things. I have to say, like, I wouldn't be messing with any of those dinosaurs. All of them seem like really aggressive. Yeah, it's just such a... It seems so counterintuitive, right? I don't know. Yeah. It just... What did you think of... What did you think of uh, my favorite? Uh, Soyona... And her uh, and well, her laser I, her laser guided as, dinosaur system. I think as I've declared on this show many times before, I have a massive crush on her, yeah. so I give her a free pass. Yeah. 
What, I give her a free pass all the time. What did you think of like her laser guided dinosaur system? Though? Yeah, I thought that was a bit ridiculous. Yeah. Let's be let's be fair. Yeah. Like, why they're not cats? They're dinosaurs. Yeah. You know, you can't point the laser and, and and they. What's amazing is that they had object permanence, which is to say yeah. that she pointed the laser at them for ten seconds. If they yeah. imprinted on the victims, yeah. and then they chased them across. And not just the city, like across the country of Malta, <laughs> yeah. right? If you're, she, they went from downtown Valletta, which yeah. is where that old school market is yeah. that we've been to. Yep. We went from downtown Valletta of old Malta through modern Malta, through the outskirts of Valletta into like all the, the way the, into to like, the coast, yeah. to the coast, which is literally on the other side of the island. Yeah. In a uh, fifteen minute chase sequence for what a scooby snack i mean what are they doing and and and, and because she pointed a laser <laughs> yeah. pointer at this guy yeah. and i mean i don't know man it's just I look i get it it's a plot contrivance it's fine you look over it but when this move the thing is but what why isn't that dinosaur like swimming why isn't that dinosaur swimming like when does it end it ends when they yeah, exactly. It would have been like, better if it would have the... been like swimming all the way over to like Switzerland and then come through and say, ha ha, I haven't forgotten about that laser dot. Yeah, that, <laughs> well, that would have made me laugh though, in all fairness. <laughs> that would have made me laugh. Uh, you know. Heat and, seeking and, missile. <laughs> and you just know, by the way, that she, if they do make a Jurassic Park 7, she's going to come back. Oh, I hope so. being one of the bad guys. She was an uh, excellent bad guy. Yeah. She was cold calculated but you know what you just know that because she was the one bad guy who wasn't eaten by a dinosaur that it's likely that she, every other bad guy in this movie was eaten by a dinosaur yeah so you just know she's gonna come back and be a villain in the next one if they ever make a next one all right that's jurassic that's dominion Jurassic World Dominion? Yeah. It's Jurassic World Yeah, Domin Jurassic World Dominion. Jurassic World Dominion. Let's see what happens. Do you, have you heard anything about how is the... Uh, it's too early to tell for like? box office. We'll get early estimates for box office. As of time... To, we're recording on Saturday. The movie came out... Uh, Saturday the 11th. The movie came out mm. on Friday the 10th. And I think what we're going to see is... It's got... Two problems. One, the movie isn't good. And two, Top Gun is still in the theaters. So I think what we're going to see <laughs> is that That's really we'll quite get a, early estimates. Yeah. We'll get early estimates to box office receipt tomorrow, 12th of June. And we'll get final numbers probably sometime midday on the 13th on Monday. So I will see how it goes. I really expected that even if this movie were mediocre, which this movie is well beyond mediocre to terrible, mm. I thought that, you know what? I don't care if the movie is not good because I didn't like Jurassic World 1 so much. I didn't like Jurassic World 2 no, at all. No. But they both still made a billion dollars. One, like Jurassic World 1, uh, one made like 1.6 billion or 1.4 billion. Jurassic World 2 made. 1.1 or 1.2 billion. Is that so right? I thought in my mind, in my mind, I thought that even if the movie isn't good, even if I don't like it, there are still going to be dinosaurs. There are going to be some good action sequences. I think this is going to be the perfect blockbuster summer for it. I thought it was going to be, you know, that's why I think I had ranked Jurassic World 3 as my number two film in the cinemas. I think this is going to come way down. I don't think it, I think it's going to not, I think the reviews are so bad for it right now that even people who are desperate to see movies would say, you know what, I'd rather go see Top Gun a second time than waste my time watching a movie that's terrible. Which is why, at best, I think this is going to be a movie that people are going to adore when it gets to streaming. But when it comes to... You know, going to the cinema, I think you should avoid it. I think you should avoid it at all costs. I think I'm going to no read what. these off. You know, I get this from the numbers, which you and I subscribe yeah. to, right? So I will read these off in order. And this is, I assume this is adjusted for... Inflation. I think so, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to... Generally speaking, yeah. by the numbers is, yeah. yeah. Uh, so Jurassic Park 1993. You want the worldwide or do you want the domestic? Oh, uh, no, go worldwide. Let's, Let's go, go worldwide. worldwide. Let's be global. Okay. 1993 Jurassic Park the original 1 billion 
Uh, Amazing. The second one, 600 million. The third one, 365. Huge drop. Huge drop. Yeah. 14 years later, people kind of forgot about it and they were excited for the reboot. Jurassic World, 1.7. There you go. Fallen Huge. King- yeah, that's crazy. Fallen Kingdom, 1.3. And oh, then, God, unbelievable. Uh, actually, they've got Dominion so far. Oh, they've got estimated already? Yep, and it's 74 million. Yeah, but that's probably just the yeah. Friday numbers, and yeah. that's probably just, like, that's few. That's I don't know how tenth. many. That's up to the 10th, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, I, so it's going to break 100 million for sure, because it's still a Jurassic Park movie. There's still some dinos in there, and yeah. no matter what, you're going to get the diehards. But I don't, I think it's going to use, I think where you're going to see the drop off is next weekend. I think the first weekend yeah. people aren't reading reviews, aren't watching, yeah. they're not listening to films and it, stuff. <laughs> they're going to go watch the, they're going to go watch the movie. They're going to get utterly disappointed. They're going to listen to films and stuff and they're going to realize, oh my God, we should have waited. We should have heard films and stuff first. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's really, when they had those numbers though, it really justifies bringing in a new big star. Honestly, if they bring in just Timberlake and Beale, I'm, I'm just making those people up, but I mean, wow, if they would have done that and had those carry then from six to seven, that seems like it would have justified another billion plus and it would have set seven up for something really great, you know? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I still think that the fundamental issue with this movie is the plot structure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the writing structure. No so humor. I think, no humor. And and if you don't want to have like humor or good level fun, that's fine too. But then make the make sure that the movie's good. Top Gun didn't have me rolling in laughs, but the movie was good. So oh, I yeah. didn't. You know, you can excuse the fact that you're not walking out of the movie laughing your head off, but that's fine. That's not what the movie is designed to do. And when you have someone like Jeff Goldblum, and when you have someone like Chris Pratt, two naturally comedic stars. Try to throw in some humor in there. All right, Pete. That's our, that's our view. That is our view. It is time to wrap it up for today. But we've got at least several other, other episodes that we've got to discuss, which is Ms. Marvel. We've got to discuss Adam Sandler's Hustle and season three of For All Mankind is out. We've got to discuss all those, Pete. That's right. We're going to do that. So I think uh, we'll talk about Ms. Marvel definitely, maybe along with uh, For All Mankind in one episode, oh, maybe two. We don't know yet because it's because they're only one one episode of each has dropped. We we don't know where it's going yet. It's too early for both of those series. But yes, uh, they're still we still definitely have some good thoughts on them. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. We will catch you next time on Films and Stuff. Thanks, Ethan. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of Films and Stuff. If you haven't already, please subscribe and review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever podcasts are downloaded. Films and Stuff. There is no substitute.